The OpenAI Responses API was released just last week and so far I've demoed how you can replace the chat completion endpoint with the new responses endpoint. Remember, do check out the OpenAI blog for details about why responses is the direction that they're going in. Uh, I've also demoed how you can do a file search and in this bubble tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how we can do a web search using the new OpenAI Responses endpoint. So we're going to start by getting familiar with it in the OpenAI Playground, which now looks like this. Make sure that you've got the Responses API checked in the top. And then under Tools, we can add in Web Search. And you can add in a load of additional data here, but it does say that it's optional. And so I'm just going to click Add. Now let's ask a question that it's not going to have the answer to based on its most recent training data. It's actually going to need to go out and search and find the answer. And I think a good question for that is who is the prime prime minister of canada okay because that has recently changed so i send off the message we see it searching the web and we should get back yeah mark carney is now the prime minister of canada sworn in on march 14th so that was only a few days ago and now we know that it is getting most recent data and it's also giving us sources which i think is a huge leap forward for uh, any ai that it provides sources so how do we take this and add it in to our bubble app. So I'm gonna swap over here. I'm in the API connector and I've already demoed, uh, like I say, just the responses endpoint and how to, to uh, search a vectorized, one or more vectorized files. Um, so as a quick reminder, you would add in a new API, provide any name you like, a private key in header, authorization, bearer, and then your API key. How do we know all that? Well, because it's in the documentation. We have our endpoint, I'm gonna copy that in fact, and then we have authorization, bearer, API key, content type application JSON is a default value in bubble now, you don't need to add that in. Um, but what we will need also is uh, this part here because this is the body or the data section of our call. So let's go back in here and we'll add in a new call. And I'm doing it this way because it just means I don't have to keep adding in the API key. All of these calls will use any of the parameters that we add in at the top. So I'll say uh, uh, AI web search. Now it is a post request and then I paste in the endpoint and I set this as action because I want it to be an action like a node in a workflow that user clicks a button, we run this API call. Uh, how do I know that it's post? Well, it's described uh, as post here in the API documentation. Uh, and then in here, I'm gonna paste in the body section. And uh, I think I'm just gonna initialize this right now to make sure that I've not made any mistakes so far. Now, Bubble does say that streaming is coming soon but we are having to wait for it to write the full response before we get back our data. So we get once more a list of outputs, uh, content, and uh, here is our text. And we can scroll all the way down uh, and view it here. Now, this comes back as markdown. I can tell that because there's this is how it's adding in like bold with the two um, asterisks, but we get back a really comprehensive uh, and all the citations. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. I just love the fact that there are citations now. Uh, it's, well, you know, it's a small thing, but it's really gonna transform how people trust and rely on AI products. So I'm gonna click save because that trains Bubble that this is what the response looks like. Perfect. Uh, and then um, let's build a quick bit of UI uh, so that a user can ask a question and we get the response back and we show that back to the user. But before I do that, if you're building something with Bubble or you're wanting just to build your own uh, no-code web application, soon to be native app builder coming soon, later on this year, that's what Bubble is saying, uh, there's no better place to do that than planetnocode.com. There is a link down in the description because we've effectively trained a custom GPT on hundreds and hundreds of our Bubble tutorial videos, We've got over 500 at this point. Uh, and instead of searching through YouTube, trying to find the right video, you can just ask our AI assistant. It's gonna recommend the right videos. It's gonna give you a text response telling you step-by-step 
what to do, how to build what you're trying to do, adding it into your bubble app. We've also got beginner courses and how to build a chat GPT clone, uh, which covers a lot of the basics of how to use the OpenAI API. So you can get all of that by becoming a Planet No Code member. Right, I wanna make some of this dynamic. So the input here uh, is gonna be dynamic. And so I'm gonna use triangle brackets and write input uh, and then just click out. I'm using triangle brackets because that's how I add dynamic content into this particular part of the API call. I then mark it as not private. That's because I don't need to protect this from my users. My users are actually providing the text that goes into that. On the other side, what I do want to protect from my users is my API key, and that's why it's marked as private in header. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and just create a new page, and I'm going to call it AI Search Web with OpenAI. And this is not a lesson in UI development um, or making responsive website. It is just how you can get a working demo really quickly. So here's my query box. And then I'm going to add in a button. And I'm going to add in some text. Now, I'm not going to save the responses to the database. I'm going to use what Bubble calls custom states. But if you come from a more traditional coding background, they're basically variables on the page. Uh, so let's set one up on the page. I'm clicking on the page and then I'm going to add in a custom state. And I'll call this one uh, AI response. And it is of type text. And then my text label here is just going to be my page, custom state, and that's it. So it's going to print the results in this box here. I'm going to make this quite a bit bigger. It's not going to be responsive. If you want it to be responsive in terms of web design, height, width of elements, you need to make sure that this is rows and columns. And you would definitely be doing that with any app that you intended to release to users. But this is just a quick demo. Uh, so let's say, call this Ask AI with Search. And now we plug it in with a workflow. So I'm in the workflow tab here. When this button is clicked, and then I'm going to search for my API call. Now I've got loads here because this is a demo app that I've been using for years now, but I just want the AI search. And that's exactly what I named it in the uh, API connector. I then connect in the multi-line input value JSON safe. And I JSON safe it because, well, what if a user sends something that looks like code, like speech marks? I need it to uh, escape, make safe those speech marks so that it knows what's code and what's user input. It also adds the speech marks back in at the start and end of this text string. Then I want to save the response. So I say set state, find my custom state. And this is where I got a little bit uh, confused or I had to debug in the previous video, which is something that responses, oh, I think I just need to adjust to it, but it's not quite as simple to use as text completion, finding that output. So I believe it is outputs, and then it's second item in the outputs, because I think it sends the um, first, your, basically your user message back to you. Uh, so then I go content, and then it is the first item in the contents text. And basically what I've tried to do and I hope I've got right first time here, is here is the output. I've gone into outputs, and I'm trying to target this particular part here. And if it doesn't work, I'll show you how to debug it. Let's go ahead. Oh, I don't want the help videos. And uh, let's go ahead and preview. This is from the previous demo where I was showing how we can search files. Um, so we'll, we'll ask again, uh, who is who is the prime minister? of Canada. Okay, so there's a loading bar going across the top. We're waiting on OpenAI to respond. Um, and there we go, we get back our response. Now the reason it's cut off is because it's not responsive. Uh, the design is not responsive. So you can see I'm getting back my data, I'm getting back uh, my sources, and it is replying in Markdown, uh, which is this kind of the way it's presenting these links here. Um, so you could use a system prompt to uh, respond in a different way. Oh, yeah, let's in fact, let's add that in because I believe OpenAI have changed how that works. So it's no longer called a system prompt. It's no longer called a developer prompt. It is called a instructions prompt uh, or it's the instructions parameter. So let's go ahead and add that in instead because we, when Bobble displays rich text without 
using like a code block or a plugin to convert Markdown, it's doing it as BB code. So I actually want it to respond in BB code and then uh, you can see here, recognize links. Uh, it's actually going to pick out the links. Oh, let's make it red so it really stands out. Um, so let's go ahead and add that in. Uh, so I believe it's just on the instructions. Uh, and then uh, let's do it like this because this is uh, what I found to be best practice is I'm going to make the instructions I'm not going to put the instructions in here because it's just difficult to format with line breaks with additional punctuation I'm going to put it in arbitrary text in the workflow and I'll, I'll explain why as I do that uh, so let's call it instructions because I need to get out of the habit of calling it system prompt and then because it's JSON there is a comma separating all values so I put a comma at the end uh, how did I know to put it there? Well, simply because it's instructions like this. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's go back and uh, go back into our workflow. And now, ooh, I think it's because it's marked as private. There we go. So arbitrary text, and arbitrary text is a way of grouping together text. It gives you this whole input here and then I can JSON save at the end. And if you are wanting to do a more advanced system prompt, you want to be laying it out, you might be using XLM tags in there, such as uh, like roll, like that, and writing, writing the, the role that you want in there, or instructions, or aims, objectives, that sort of thing. You know, there's a whole, uh, whole part of YouTube which is dedicated to prompt engineering. Um, we tend to just make the best that we can. Uh, so I'm going to say here, uh, uh, when responding, uh, use BB code and not markdown. Now, I don't know if this is going to work well, but we're going to give it a try. Who is the, uh, pro who is the PM of Canada? Okay, it sort of worked. So it's detected, actually, I don't think it has worked. It's just seen that there is a link in there, hasn't it? So let's just go ahead and debug it. Now it's still replying as, it's still replying as Markdown. Um, so, uh, oh, let me get an example of what a BB code link looks like. So I've just used ChatGPT to write me a BB code link example. Uh, and so I will add it into my system prompt and I'll say, uh, for example, uh, write all links like this. Now let's try it again. Who who is the PM of Canada? Hmm. I, okay, in that case, I'm beginning to wonder whether uh, there's a sort of uh, overarching system instructions uh, so that when it gives a source, it expresses it in this way. Uh, one obvious solution, although um, it's a little bit of faff, would be that you run this once more through uh, an AI and you say convert uh, the links um, from Markdown to BB code. Uh, but I think that's something that I might well tackle in another, in another mm. video because right now we have got a working example of how you can use the OpenAI Responses API to do a web search and to get uh, answers back uh, into your no-code bubble app.